My name is Bill Mould, and I want to give you a very quick introduction of myself. I'm a master mechanic, former civilian pilot, teacher of how to build bicycle wheels, college professor, and master wheel builder with over 4,000 wheels under my belt of every conceivable type. For several years, I've been doing a lot of experiments and working with some scientists and engineers at leading universities. And that has led to this video series, The Bicycle Wheel, Physics and Engineering. I collected massive amounts of data from some of the experiments I did, and I'll give you a glimpse into some of them. I want to use my movie camera to show you this apparatus because it's turned out to be a perfect setup for measuring spoke tension. The wheel, as you can see, is resting on a treadmill, so I can change the position of the wheel by rotating the wheel by just turning the pulley here on the treadmill, and I don't have to do anything, I don't have to lift up the wheel at all, so this has proved to be very, very useful to be able to position the wheel exactly without having to change anything else. I installed an external cup on the uh, bottom bracket shell, which allows a three-quarter inch threaded rod to go through the bottom bracket, and uh, turned out to be a very good fit. Spaced equally on both sides are some pretty heavy chains that go around the treadmill and through that hole in the table. Right now these chains are slack, which means there's no load applied to the wheel of the bike. But as I lower this jack, which is supporting the weight, then we see that the weight is slowly transferred to the wheel. And at some point, the swing is just swinging freely, which means that all of the weight has been transferred to the bike. I now have a 240 pound load on the bike. Here's a wheel on my test stand with 320 pounds loaded on it, and I've tensioned it so that the spokes will go slack when they go through the load-bearing zone, and we're going to see what happens. And this spoke here appears to be so low in tension as to virtually have none. So if that's the case, I should be able to cut this spoke and have nothing happen. There it is. There. And there. No tension. These are all spokes that have no tension. None there. Quite a bit here. None here. After all that, I have removed 21 of the 32 spokes in the wheel. The wheel is a little bit elliptical, but it's still supporting the load. Makes you wonder how many spokes is the minimum to have on a wheel. So I followed up with a wheel that started with four spokes and one with two spokes. My experiments on rotational weights and rates of acceleration have some very compelling videos. We start with two identical wheels. The one on the left has a chain wrapped around the circumference of the wheel, and the one on the right has a chain of the same length wrapped around the hub. We're going to drop the weights and see how fast the wheels accelerate. What we've obviously seen here is that the wheel on the right that has the chain around the hub, the weight dropped rather quickly. The wheel spun up fast, but the wheel also slowed down rather quickly. The wheel on the left, the weight was slower to drop. 
the wheel was slower to spin up, but continued spinning a longer period of time. And there are very many more experiments, as well as a lot of studying into other topics, of which I'll give you some examples. Studying the behavior of wheels when loaded from the side. Measuring the deflection of rims from the ground with side loads. Studying spoke elasticity. Static and dynamic forces on a vertically loaded wheel. Studying the braking forces on disc brake bicycles. And exactly what causes an endo. A look at this table of contents will probably convince you of the depth and breadth of coverage of this video. Check out my website for more information about this video, which is interesting and informative, and you'll see some good examples of some of the videos that are in there on the website, so you can get a sense of the content.